Hello everyone and welcome to Answer the Call. This is actually the second take of the intro because I screwed it up completely. Uh, we're going to be talking about will capacitors and operator modes change anything. We had four wonderful callers today. It was really, really great. Uh, and I, I really hope you guys enjoy the show. But basically what we're going to be talking about today is do these make significant changes? Are these going to make the changes that we need for PvP to become more dynamic, more interesting, and more fun? In my opinion, uh, it, was, it was difficult to understand exactly what these are yet, and I think it's kind of why we have had the conversation today. The... I don't know exactly what these are going to do yet. So it's hard to answer the question, but I think we can kind of tell where the changes are coming. And the real issue that I have here is I, I am not quoting. I'm paraphrasing. If I got this completely wrong, please call me out in the comments down below. But there was a SEL with the missile or with the vehicle experience team and people continuously hammer with them. Guys, you got to fix the accelerations and make them better because that is what will make the flight model better. I think it was in the most recent flight model change, SCL. And what they said is, well, you know what? We're kind of confident that these capacitor gameplay, this capacitor gameplay, capacitor, capacitor, capacitor over and over again is going to be the solution to that problem. And I don't know if it is, okay? Because we don't really have it in our hands. So... Do we think that that's like one thing that they're going to like, is that going to change the major problem? And I just don't think it is, but it is going to change the way we are in combat and the way things are. So before we jump into it, guys, today's stream is sponsored by Star Trek Fleet Command. Okay. It is the mobile game on iOS and Android that we had had a sponsorship with in the past. Uh, we see that there's a goal of 51 out of 100. We reached 51 on Twitch. I want to see how we do on YouTube. Uh, basically, there's going to be a QR code that's going to come up on the screen right now. I'm going to pop it up in the top right. So if you hit pause on YouTube, you can uh, try it out. All you got to do is take out your phone, scan the QR code. That will link me and you on Star Trek Fleet Command. And then when you play through and get to level two, that's just getting your uh, operations building to level two. It's really simple. It's just getting through the tutorial. It's about five minutes of your time. It is a huge... Uh, Huge way to support my channel. I don't I don't ask you guys to do much. Uh, this is one of the things that I will go out and ask you guys to do. So hit up that QR code right up there and help support the channel. I really, really appreciate it. All right, guys. So without that, without further ado, we'll jump into the main show. I hope you guys enjoy it. So, all right, let's jump in and get our first caller in here. And that is Zane. What's up, Zane? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I do. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, colors. There you are, Zane. All right. So, where do you want to go with capacitors? I'm kind of leaving this pretty open ended. I mean, the question is, do you think it's going to change things? How much? And how yeah, will it so change things? How do you expect to play the game differently now? Straight to the point. I think capacitor will change in some form the gameplay. Yoki mentioned briefly in the video and he also confirmed it on a discord server that with capacitors they are reworking a lot of the balancing with weapons and maybe even thrusters so just that it will change the meta and it will change uh how we fly our ship how we pvp how we combat in general will the change be positive or negative i think it's too early to tell Okay. Uh, we haven't seen much of the system yet. I think the video, the, the ISC where they showed Capacitor was not that good at explaining the system, at explaining um, how it will work, how, will, how it will integrate with the current power triangle. Will the mm -hmm. po power triangle be gone? Uh, will it be replaced by Capacitor? We don't know yet. It has the potential to be a good addition to uh, the flight experience. And it's kind of crazy we had to wait so long for to get this kind of gameplay. 
uh, because as you said uh, before, many other games have implemented similar systems. Will it fix combat? I don't think so. I don't think it will uh, completely fix all the issues we have right now. And why is that? I think like right now we have two major issues with combat, uh, especially with PvP. Okay. One is uh, the biggest one. I think is the uh, it's the fact that uh, it's too easy to get above SCM speed uh, while in combat, and that means uh, you can ex escape all the time. Or uh, if the guy that doesn't want to escape, it ends up in jousting. Uh, so that's one of the biggest issues they have to fail. They have to, they have to fix. They have to find a way to make you fight uh, in SCM. And the intention and is for in the these fight, to do that, though. So how do you think that they think this is supposed to do that? This is not supposed to do that. Yoki said. I asked him, and he okay. said, "I don't think a capacitor will fix this issue. Um, th there is some other stuff that is coming later." Uh, th that it's supposed to fix it. So that's why I'm saying I don't think Capacitor will fix combat. The other issue, I think, is that we need, um, and this is about trusted Capacitors, we need something that gives us a significant boost, a short amount of boost, but it has to be significant, not like the Afterburner we currently have, so that we can e escape the yeah. um, firing range of the other, of the opponent and we can break the current face-to-face -face DPS meta and, and circle strafing. Yeah. And that could be done with capacitors, but that's all about balancing. Like if they make it so uh, trusted capacitor are so powerful that you can almost immediately uh, change your uh, speed vector. So like if you're going in a direction at SCM and you use the trusted capacitor with boost, you almost immediately like go to left to right uh, uh, right to left uh, that could be that could be the solution something like the old boost we had back in i don't know like 2.4 1.x patches mm -hmm. it was really powerful the current boost i don't think it's really uh it doesn't really change anything because it's it's not that significant of a truster uh, like acceleration difference to to make you change the the vector you're cu you're currently heading to okay so so yeah i think it's not a complete fix it has the potential to make combat better uh it really depends on the balancing though and again yeah. they said it's going to be uh something that they do across multiple patches so hopefully this time they stick around and they keep balancing based on the feedback from the community like if they just add it maybe change a couple of values and then forget about it again i don't think it's gonna do it's gonna be a big difference yeah i agree the the one thing i would ask you now is when it comes to balance do you see how fast some like they were blowing up vanguards in a few shots yeah. after the shields were down in those videos yeah like, like I, I don't know where do you think that's going? Uh, I don't, mm, I don't overanalyze that footage uh, when it comes to like time to kill and all of that because you never know. Maybe yeah. they have, they were testing, and also the footage it was not that good. Like I told Yoki, <laughs> it if was you hard have to, to explain some, if you have to explain something like this, like uh, record gameplay, like while while you're in the game and you're showing, you're explaining the feature. Uh, and and just show that because they have the devs talking, but then it the editing makes it so it jumps around and the footage is some like random footage, so it's not always related to what they're talking about. So it's hard to like it, it's it's not that meaningful. Maybe uh, it's the new time to kill. Maybe it was just a test. We don't know. Yeah. But like regarding time to kill, that's a whole another topic because. It's all about armor and physical components. So who knows? It's too early to tell about that. Yeah. It just comes down to, like, I feel like the intention of killing another player in game is not always the goal. Like, the, the big explosion is is a, a thing, but 
I feel like like most of the time if you're attacking another player, your intention isn't it shouldn't be as easy to blow them up as it yeah. is in game now. But obviously it seems yeah. to be like a little bit of a placeholder That's for whatever. That's a limitation comes later, of know? the current system. Yeah. I'm sorry, what did you say? I, I said, like, I think the idea of, like, disabling a ship or something like that is obviously something that's coming later. So this, like you said, is just a placeholder yeah. for what that might look like later, right? So Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, like, time to kill is one of the aspects of PvP. But in theory, like, if PvP, if the uh, flight system, if the flight mechanics were good enough, it shouldn't matter that much because time to kill... It's about how long you're engaged in the fight. But the fight itself, it should have a, a, a good flow to it. So it should not about just looking at each other while circle strafing and shooting, hoping that uh, your DPS is higher than the other guy. It should be about trying to get an advantage over the other guy. And then time to kill, it's about how long it lasts. Um, it's about uh, shooting, targeting the right components so that the advantage, the advantage you get is higher. Maybe you, you shoot mm -hmm. the thrusters or the power plant or whatever. But I think it's something that uh, it's kind of on top of it. Like if the flight, if the dog fighting is positional and it has a uh, good geometry, time to kill, it comes, it kind of comes later. Like it doesn't matter. It's, it's something that uh, it's not needed immediately. Like we had arena commander for for years and back then it, uh, like years ago it was actually fun and yeah. the time to kill was really fast higher time to kill is something that's needed for the mmo but first the, the fighting has to be fun and then it has to be balanced i think yeah the the one thing that people are pointing at in the twitch chat is that the footage that we saw was pre uh 313 because the shields are the old shields uh it could be. It, it could be that I mean, it's it pretty is. old because sometimes yeah. they do that. But uh, you also have to consider that probably they have uh, this. This is a branch that it's pretty old that it's separated from the main branch. So maybe they didn't pull in the shields. So with that footage, you never know. But it's possible that it's quite old because it's I, just I've implying noticed... that they're not developing in the the three thirteen branch. Like this wasn't video that was recorded this week. Yeah, that's for sure. that, that's the point. So like the UI that looks a little bit hard to read or hard to understand. The the point that you were making about like the video was difficult earlier to understand what was going on. This footage was quite old, it, it appears, and and has been you know in the process for a while. But anyway, the I I agree with all your points. I they did mention positional combat though in the video. Yeah, but like. I don't know. Sometimes I I think your boy CAG Yogi just... mentioned it. Yeah. So why is know. Yogi telling you one thing and telling the rest of the community another? Right. I I think he I think he believes this will help with it at the very least. So this is he, he, this is the thing because I I kind of talked to him but but it was a brief uh, conversation. Um, he said uh, that later when the feature is it's coming. He will post uh, a thread on Spectrum where he really explains it uh, in a more detailed way. Um, he didn't mention anything about balancing and whether like uh, the afterburner acceleration are getting buffed or anything. So it is possible because this is what I said. Him, I said we have to fix. You have to fix in somehow uh, the um, uh, high speed combat. Because maybe like while you're testing in your environment, you are playing the game in the intended way. And so perhaps uh, while you are, are at SCM speed, there is positional combat. The problem is that players, they don't play the game in the way you intend uh, the game to be played. And if yep. they are not, um, if they can do something, they will do it. So if they can uh, just boost away, they will do that, and it will break positional combat no matter what. Yep. So maybe like the way they're playing the game, it has positional combat right now in their own build. But then it goes to live, it goes to the PTU, to the PU, and player just boosts away. They 
they go at cruise speed and it, it will break the whole thing. Yeah. And that's where I thought that these thruster capacitors were supposed to take us, is that they can't just be at boost constantly or at these high speeds, but that's clearly seeming like it's not the case. Yogi tells you that it's not even going to fix high speed combat. So it's like one of these things, like it's like, I, I kind of I think... see it from, and like you can't even fire laser weapons without the capacitor being active, it looks like. It's that just I a... think is weird. Yeah. That I think is weird. Because when I, um, when I heard about capacitor the first time, I was more under the impression that you could always do everything you do now in your ship. So you can always fly, you can always afterburner, you can always shoot. But the, um, the capacitor were about boosting that aspect. So yeah. uh, you're shooting you should faster or you get more dps you get more damage you are after uh, you use afterburner it's faster uh you uh, give it to shield uh, the the shield get they absorb more damage but it seems like it's not about boosting performance uh for a short amount of time it seems like it's about making it work at all well it's about recharging it which is the weird thing so you can fire your weapons with your capacitor weapon at zero but it will fire and your charge your weapon charge just goes down and then in order to get it to come back up you have to put your your i, I think the best example is what we have on screen right now is it might be a little tough to see but they have their weapon i have some delay okay now we see it. yeah they have their weapon capacitor up on red and then the purple line is the uh the rate at which your capacitor is recharging and the white thick line is how much fuel your capacitor has. So if I like uh, go into slow-mo, oops, the subtitles. If I go into slow-mo, uh, like half speed, we'll see it go up very quickly. And if he switches, which I don't think he does in this scene, but if he switched to shields, you would see that purple line go down and it's weird. You don't need them to fire, but you do need them. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. That's one of the things why I said the, the video didn't do a, a good job at explaining the system. Yeah. And, and that's why and we're and having a show like for what is the last week. Yeah, so I don't know. Is there anything else you want to add for this before we go to the next caller? Mm, no, I don't think so. Maybe like uh, operator mode, uh, I oh, see yeah. it's in the title. Yeah. I don't have mm, many opinions about it. I think uh, it's cool we're getting more multi-crew stuff. Uh, I think it's kind of lazy, though, that multi-crew is basically taking away what we had and uh, put a limitation. Not. So It's not. Okay, I think a lot of people are confused by this. What missile operator mo or uh, operator modes in general seem to be is fixing the bug or problem that if you were in the pilot seat and I was in the co-pilot seat, it's there there's a situation where I, no matter what if i'm in the in the pilot co-pilot seat i do not have control any control over any aspect of the ship because if you're in the pilot seat and take control of the shields you you're now you now own it i can't take it back it, it how i understand it is it separates things from the pilot seat as the end all be all owner in the hierarchy of things so now the the co-pilot seat is not the one who has to quantum travel they're able to quantum travel separately without the pilot if need be so it creates the hierarchy but you decide who has it so operator modes are like they explained it mining was one when you press m uh quantum travel was one when you press b and scanning is when you press tab those are the three operator modes that we have in game currently. So nothing has changed. The pilot in a single seater 
and a, a pilot in a multi crew ship has as, has the ability to use all of those things except for mining, obviously. But it allows the co pilot to basically use those roles while the pilot is in their seat. Does that make sense? No, that's how I, I, I understand that. it. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I think that's it. So how's it um, taking away? I, that's what I don't understand. I, I the, think the that problem is that I think the problem is that in order to make a missile operator more more valuable, uh, they made it so you cannot shoot while using it. I think that's the issue because uh, they had to put this limitation to make it. Uh, they nerfed it missiles, it. dude. That's the, that was the point of it was ner to nerf missiles. I think. Yeah, but like I, I don't know. Maybe there could have been some other ways. I, I'm not totally against it. I mean, I kind of like the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's one of those cases where uh, game design has to get over uh, realism because you, you would expect in 900 years, a uh, uh, dogfighter will be able to shoot missiles while shooting the guns. But sure. it doesn't matter because this is a game. This, I is, just this hope... is them trying to balance the game out. Yeah. I just hope that they, they don't get too far away with this idea of, uh, yeah, let's take what we already have and make it so uh, you cannot do it anymore and you need more people to do it. I think that's the problem with the game being playable in the alpha state. Because you would have like, never known. Things... You probably wouldn't have any problem with it if you weren't able to do it before and you just played Star Citizen on release and this is how, it's wor how it worked. Sure, it's like, oh, sure. okay, I have to press M or whatever, middle mouse to go into missile mode to fire my missiles, and then I can come back and fire my ships. But you also have to remember, as we just talked about capacitors, right? So your capacitors drain. If you're if you're skilled enough, click the button that you go into missile operator mode, fire your missiles, boom, put your put your capacitor into weapons. By the time you come back, you're you've you're on the offense the whole time, right? So you gotta like these all these things could be working together in uh, like har like harmoniously if you're good enough with it one of the things i was hoping for uh, operator missile operator mode was that uh, i don't think i don't know if it's still in the game but some it used to be that when you shoot missiles if you kept the uh, bottom pressed you would see the missile uh, like the camera would attach the missile and you will see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I was hoping that the operator uh, would be able to, um, if it if he chose to do it, it would be able to follow the missile and also kind of guide it. So it will become more effective. Who's to say that isn't a possibility in the future? Oh, it, it, it could be. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, it it this... can be that they will add it. This separating of the thing could maybe make that a reality in the future. But having the pilot have to do that is weird. Because the pilot still has to worry about flying. True, true. So like a missile operator, like, uh, like all right, you're firing the missiles in a multi-cruise ship. Like, the one thing that they've really failed at over the years and and are are definitely looking like they're making the effort to to change is that multi crew ships have not ever been a, a choice in the meta over a single seater ship in any combat scenarios. Like really, right? Like yeah. a multi crew ship that like, let's use a Vanguard for an example, like a Vanguard as a solo pilot is still better than a lot of other ships just because it was mm -hmm. better. But it and it and it's it and its multi crew aspects have not been the reasons why you would choose it. Is what I mean. I I think that is mainly due to two issues. The first one is that we don't have armor, so those ships are not that bulky, are not that uh, resilient as they should be. And the other one is sure. that turrets are still not. Um, good enough. Like I think turrets should be better uh, than another uh, fighter, essentially. Like if I have a, a ship, like an Andromeda, 
uh, and I have uh, someone else is playing with me and he has a Gladius, I should say to that guy, don't pick up the Gladius, get into the turret because it's better. Right now it's not like that. Okay, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I don't think it should just be better. But I, I think it... I'm more along the lines of like, from a gameplay standpoint, is it more fun? Is it more effective? Like effective means better, but I think I mean it in, in a different way. I'm having a hard time sharing my way I think about this. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe throughout the podcast I'll I'll have my thoughts more laid out on turrets. I didn't really think about that with the operator mode, which I probably should have. But yeah. So and w one last thing I will say regarding the uh, capacitors and high speed, uh, I think CIG should find a way. Like the, there are two main issues with high speed combat. The first one is that you can very easily, even without boost, uh, get at one thousand meters per second and joust. Yeah. Yes. And the other problem is that while doing that, uh, quantum traveling away is too easy. Uh, and so, like, you can, even if there is an armor head, even if there is, like, a, a Catalyst Blue and, and you get jammed, you can just, um, like, boost away. At some point, you will exit the, um, the range of the jammer, especially if you have um, maybe not an Aurora, but a good ship that, it, that has good shields and yeah. a lot of health. You can just escape and then quantum travel away. Like the things I, I think we really need. First one is that we need some kind of uh, limitation to quantum travel. Maybe you cannot quantum travel at high speeds, or maybe if you get it, the um, pull the is it pulling like when the quantum travel charges, it gets reset. If you but get hit, that still or does not. Yeah, yeah that, but that still does not solve the issues because even if you can't quantum travel away you can still joust and so there needs to be a way to prevent you from jousting and the current limitations they have put into the game uh i don't even remember what they put because at first they were more limitation than they maybe shields and spread on weapons is that it is that what we have in game right now uh, I think like if you were using uh, auto gimbals, maybe auto gimbal, yeah, that it it's less effective. Missiles don't lock as quickly. It, it, whatever they did didn't do a good enough job to slow people down. Yeah. obviously, so they need to go I, back I, to I the think drawing the problem, board on that. The, the I thought that this with what that capacitors system. was for though, but now you're telling me that it's totally different. So yeah. no, but I, wrap, I wrap it up a little bit though, because we're already thirty minutes into the show. Yeah, and there's three more, three more people that want to call. No, I I just wanted to say that these kind of limitations they're not affected enough. First of all, because a new player, uh, a noob doesn't know about them, and if like he, he won't care, he will just do whatever he thinks he will get out of the the situation. And the other problem is that if the guy chooses to do something that's wrong, so it just boosts away, you have to, it forces you to do it too, because unless you just wanted to get away, you have to follow him. And in order to follow him, you have to boost and, and get above SCM speed. Yeah. So there needs to be something else. I honestly don't know what, like the only thing that comes to mind, but it's not, uh, it has been proposed many times. I don't think it's very uh, appreciated as an idea is that, there needs to be some kind of spooling for uh, speeds above SCM2. Mm -hmm. I don't like it either, like, uh, but it's the only thing that comes to mind that would fully fix the issue. Okay. Well, all right, Zane. I appreciate your call, man. Very insightful. And, uh, yeah, a little, a little uh, jarring that capacitors won't fix the high-speed combat, which is literally the yeah, biggest problem if, if the game has. If you want, has. I can send you the screenshots. Um, of what Yoki said. No, I mean, you can post them in chat, maybe, and somebody can post it on Reddit or something. I don't know if it was a private conversation or not, though. No, no, it was on a uh, public Discord, the a AOTW Discord. Okay. Yeah, if you want to, it's up to you. I won't uh, force you to do that. But all right, Zane, I'll drop you out, and we'll bring in our next caller. Thank you so much again. Good call, buddy. 
Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye now. All right. Our next caller is Doc. What's up, Doc? Hello. Hello. So, how you doing? And I'm I know good. our first call was a, a bit of a, a long one. Did is there anything that you would say differently? Do differently? Um, not really. But I don't think the capacitors will sort of save it. Um, because I couldn't like understand it. To be honest. Do you? Okay, that's a good thing. Do you? All right. Obviously, like Zane said, that the video was like really difficult to understand. Do you think that we're making the game even more complicated and more difficult, even though it's a similar UI, similar experience to other games like Elite Dangerous and Star Wars Squadrons that people have played? I don't think this goes for like transfer over okay. um well actually like in a way it's sort of the same but not um, quite like yeah not quite um because you have like six pips three different areas and they all um affect it strangely yeah. um but i don't think it'll happen in sc because a it's too early to tell and b it like hasn't been talked about as much as I would like. They just say capacitors, um, but never really explained what they did. And then the yeah, first time exactly. they explained them, they did a really poor job of doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of the that's kind of like the, uh, the frustration behind it. Yeah. Um. But the um, operator stuff is quite interesting because I think that will open up um, extra. I don't know what to call it, but it'll be interesting to say the least. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I think for people that are interested in multi crew gameplay and yeah, and That's want what it's for, to really, I think. yeah, I think it's for this yeah. is for them and the, it. I assume you think it's a a good and welcome change. Yeah, I think it's a good change. Yeah, I think it's good. Um, how it all sort of work? I don't know because it'll be. It's, it'll be interesting to see mm -hmm. how it works in game, and like all the other um, operator stuff. So like the sc sc scanning mode, uh, the finding mode, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, which will open up other stuff in game as well. Yeah, I wonder still uh, when in scanning mode how that works. Like, what does the pilot see? Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. Like, do you have to ask someone, hey, is there like anything on the left or the right? And does like the scanner ping can... an area or something? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of on the same fence. Like, based on everything that I've seen for capacitors, I don't really see how this is going to change the game and make it uh, like make PVP great again. I think it's I another think it step will, to be honest. Yeah. I think it's maybe another step towards that. They really talked about choice and things like yeah. that. And that's like been the theme over the last like year or two of star citizen is everything is about choice. They're definitely adding choice to star citizen PVP and ships. Yeah. I did. Yeah. But it, will it be easy to make those choices? Like think about a mouse and keyboard user. Oh, the mouse and yeah, how, it's gonna be. How do you deal with how many buttons are do we need? Like it's like thirty that I already have mapped. Thirty on them that I already have mapped now are, in game. Are you a ma are you a mouse and keyboard user? Yeah. How like how do you think you're going to effectively bounce between capacitor because there's capacitors there's three. I can yeah, totally um, see if there was two. There's like side buttons on your mouse. Yeah. Uh, but like as a mouse and keyboard even, user, it seems impossible. It's going to be interesting to see how they um, implement that on the keyboard and mouse side. Yeah, because it's, I mean, look, on a joystick, it's super easy. You just go up, down, yeah. left, right, whatever. You, I, you could, I can have four of them and it'd be fine and, and easy yeah, to exactly. use, right? It's just a little thumb flick. Yeah. 
but on a keyboard and mouse, it's uh, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, like it happens in Elite as well. Like I have to take my hands off. I don't know, whatever else to take off something else. Yep. So, like I'm almost adapted to it. Yeah. That's an interesting one. I think the reason why these things kind of work better with Elite too is because Elite already mm. slows your con. Like you're not moving at the speeds that we move at. No, no, definitely right? not. It's already they already have uh, slowed down combat, or you're just in combat at, at SCM speeds. But I also yeah. don't think you have the availability that you have in Star no, Citizen. Def definitely not. No. You know. No, it's hard to actually skip sometimes. Yeah, and I, I think that's what I do think that that's what like Star Citizen PvPers do like is the that positional combat. And I don't know, do you really get positional combat in Elite Dangerous? I don't know. Again, I don't play much not Elite really. Dangerous. So I kind of ask uh, that to you and everyone not else. Really? Um, I haven't seen it as much. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know, Doc. We'll it's see. Be, you'll have to wait and see. What are you playing right now? Because I can hear you I'm not clicking. Anything. What? I'm not, really playing. I'm not playing anything at the minute. You're not really playing anything? Not really playing anything? Not really. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, not really. Yeah. It's, uh, it's one of those things where we'll have to see. I mean, that really is. The, I remember when we heard about oh, what was it, hover mode, and they were trying to explain it, or even flight model changes, and they try to explain it. It is difficult to comprehend when they have words and videos on the screen. It really is about getting into the PTU, getting it in our hands, trying it. I think things like this should be in the PTU, but not added to... Oh, things like this should be exactly like... Theaters of War. So, Theaters of War is not ready for prime time. Well, neither were capacitors or missile operator mode or any anything related to these things. But these things should be in the PTU builds so people can give feedback on them while they're being developed, maybe. Yeah, that's so, interesting. Like, yeah, like that's what? something good. Yeah, but at the same time, for something like this, maybe that's just a stupid response because they talked about how unbalanced everything is and how they would have to rebalance it significantly. So, yeah, I guess that doesn't really work. I, I kind of take that back. But I would like that to be the case. It's just, I don't know if it's possible, you know? Because even, like someone said, that's what Evocati's for. Here's the thing, though, is Evocati for 313 plays the 313 build. So the 313 build doesn't make sense for how capacitors work. Because the whole thing is, is time to kill seems to have gone down because you're not firing as often. You have to make the choice of when to fire. You have to make the choice of when to boost your shields. And that's how you stay alive. But you would never kill anybody if that was the test in the current build. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's... Um... Yeah, I can so, see that. So I, what I was arguing is that we should be testing these things while they're being developed to give feedback all the way through, but that's unrealistic and not possible. That's why they have a separate branch that they build out this stuff into because there's other changes that have to come with it that aren't just, yo, there's capacitors here now. So yeah, a... that's why I'm kind of taking it back. Yeah. Yeah. So... Are capacitors going to bring you back to playing Star Citizen, Doc, or are we only just going to keep talking about it? Probably not. I'm <laughs> going to keep talking about it. All right. All right, Doc. With that said, I guess we'll let you go. Yeah. And we'll I'll bring see you the next caller. All right, brother. Be good. All right. Our next caller is Gold Golden Triangles. And the first question I would ask you, Golden Triangles, is is this going to replace? The power triangle. Golden triangle, you there? You're muted. If you're muted, I don't know. 
His mic was there earlier. He might be AFK. So we're going to swap him out. And we're going to bring in Tonkasu. Tonkasu, are you there? Can you hear me? Uh, Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So uh, let me go for it, dude. Okay, yeah, just pause the stream. So, yeah, uh, I mean, going back to what you said, uh, I agree. I don't think that uh, Capacitor is going to fix the issue of speed. But I also don't really understand uh, the assumption that was made, I think, by the first caller that some, like, that we would not be able to do the things that we can do right now because of Capacitors. Uh, looking at, although I, I, I will agree that the video really did not do any favors to understand what capacitor mode really did, but it seemed very clear to me that it was a limited resource to give a, a, a temporary boost to all the ship features so that all the features of the ship, as they are now, they're not going to change. It's just that for a burst, uh, you're going to get a burst of, of DPS or a burst of uh, speed. And that's the part where we don't really understand. But uh, it oh, seems no. very clear to me. Yeah. If you watch the video, that's mm -hmm. not what it is at all. Uh, it is... So, so uh, enlighten me because I might have missed that, uh, okay. to be honest. But that's. Mm -hmm. I'll bring the video up again. I'll, I'll uh, bring yeah. it up. It'll be in slow motion, so it'll be really easy to see. We broke this down and paid like super duper duper close attention to it for a right. long time here yesterday. So I'm trying to try to come up to the points in which it's really well rep represented what a capacitor is. Uh, because I, I didn't catch that, but I might have missed something very important in the video. Okay. So I don't know if this is a good part. First off, Revenant Gatling gun, 77 ammo. They have 5,000 in the current build in Star Citizen and they appear to be mm. half full. Oh. So the amount of ammo has been lowered significantly for ballistics. I don't know if you have e extra ballistic uh, boxes, and then there's a time to reload, perhaps, uh, similar to what a capacitor would be will be the plan, but they didn't discuss that at all. Now, right. there is the M4A cannons on your Vanguard here, right? They have mm -hmm. full capacitor into shield. So your shield capacitor is up fully. The boost that you get to the shields is not like the boost to your shield health. It is just the boost to its regeneration. So I imagine we're going to see this regen really quickly on the screen, right? Which makes sense because the boost to the shields uh, already, I think, comes, unless it changed, comes from the overclocking, which I think is still going to be a thing. So. Yep. And then you watch as he switches to the weapons which the the capacitor is completely empty on the weapon so he can't fire then mm -hmm. the purple line gets thicker it looked like and went up that is the regeneration speed of your capacitor for weapons right right well yeah so i, I th that's the thing that kind of conf confuses me with the weapon i think it's on the weapons thing that it's the most confusing because when it comes to energy weapons i can see how capacitors can really play a role because of the overheat uh, system, how long you can fire and everything. Mm -hmm. It's more complicated with ballistic weapons because, uh, I mean, sure, there's heat, there's also heat, but I think it's very interesting what you mentioned with the ammo capacity uh, because there has we to don't be balance. really have, yeah, we don't have, we don't actually have a reload system, which I think would be really interesting to have. Like uh, maybe we have like ammo clips within the ships mm -hmm. and. Yeah, uh, th that would be pretty interesting, actually. If that's what they're going for. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's it's the capacitor is when you push power to it, it when you prioritize the capacitor, it recharges that thing, whether weapon sorcerers right. shields, quicker. Right. Now I don't okay. know how thrust is going to work. They did not do a good job of explaining that. But with weapons and shields, it seems very uh, obvious. But that's still, I mean, so uh, first of all, thanks for pointing this out because I, I did I did not pay attention to those little details. So now yeah. I understand better. But I don't I don't see how it changes the fact that we kind of still have like the basic ship functions and the capacitor. Uh, what you explained to me just basically reinforces the idea that for 
a short amount of time or while for the, the uh, capacitor that you have, you get an increased performance of the particular system you're focusing on. No, so that, no. I mean, so I the mean, increased how, how performance. The increased performance, so like, you know when you overclock a weapon, it fires faster, but it overheats quicker? Right. That's right. like increased performance. So... Well, but so is regen regenerating shields. That's an increased performance. It's just yes. on a different aspect than just, you know, the HP of the... But it's still an increase but of performance. That's fine. But from weapons, it's different. I guess right. uh, the, the thing that we're arguing here is is weapons. It does seem that the increased performance on shields... Is a thing i don't how i understand it is this is if i overclock my weapons i'm going to fire at a faster rate and i'm gonna drain my white bar for my m4a cannons quicker same with the revenant right. gatling gun but in order to gain that white bar back in order to fire my weapon right right mm -hmm. i i see what, push I see my what power mean. to my capacitor my weapon capacitor and then that will charge up quicker. And then if I right, left okay. it balanced, they all balance equally, right? Yeah, no, I see, I see what you mean now. Uh, honestly, I think the TLDR is that the video did a very poor job explaining, they should probably do a yellow post explaining exactly, okay, so what does that mean for weapons? What does that mean for shields? What does that mean for, because they, they didn't really explain anything. Like the video, uh, it showed us some cool UIs so we can yeah. speculate, but other than that no information so they should have I done mean, an scl after this like yeah yeah i i mean there's it, it, it's, there's so many speculation like uh, i don't know i don't think they did a good job explaining what what the thing actually did but yeah but yeah. uh s switching because i know you ha you probably will go back to the other color so i'm not going to take too much of your time to me the most intrinsic in that wasn't the most interesting part i think the most interesting part was really the uh, operator mode which, uh, you know, going back to, I think the big discussion right now is not so much that uh, uh, it's the problem that the, the pilot, yes, still has access to missiles, but now they have to choose between one and the other, which is cool for multi-crew, but uh, at the same time, uh, you know, the, it, it feels like there, it's very, it makes uh, single uh, seaters very limited in their options. Sure, you can still use missiles, but like having to choose between one and the other, and and also the key binding issue. So I get the both sides of the argument, but at the same time, I, I think this is a step in the right direction. They should probably try it, and if it turns out that it's really terrible, they could just dial it back to okay, well, missile operator mode. You can still Maybe like the solution is just you can still use missiles uh, without activating missile operator mode, but you don't get to uh, like uh, launch a salvo of missiles, for example. Like you can only shoot one at a time, and maybe oh, you don't man. get the inform in, uh, you don't get the information like because they talked about like uh, the missile operator mode giving you the information of oh that that's the probability like the percent the chances for you to hit the target. Maybe you don't get that information, so. It, okay, you're know. the it's, second it, one. You're the second one that's that doesn't like this. Let I me, like it. I like. I, I do. I, I, I'm just but saying then that. But then I, you're I, also I, like. But I, maybe we can still kind of have it. So like, I still think no, you no, no, want no. it. Uh, okay. So, so no, no. So uh, to be clear, I I absolutely love it, and uh, yeah. I actually did a, a post saying uh, on Spectrum, uh, missile paramod is a great thing. Embrace it. I, I, I am 100% for it. Yeah. And I do think that before we, we dial things back, we should at the very least test it, uh, before we say, oh no, let's change things. Like I, I agree that they should listen to our feedback and we sh they should change things with our feedback, but only after we actually test it, it's pointless to, to, to ask things to be changed without, without, it's, it's like saying, oh, overmode, overmode sucks, remove it without even testing it. Exactly. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense. So, so that's the first thing. I am saying though that if it does really create a problem, uh, because we can't know for sure unless we actually put put this into the paces, maybe there's a compromise to be had. But, per, but ideally, I would think, and I don't think it's going to be an issue because I think that missile operator mode is just going to make. Uh, first of all, it's not going to create a disadvantage because people are saying, oh, but you're not going to be able to fight, uh, like you're not going to get have a chance to fight on equal terms. I mean, what do you mean? Uh, the pilot of a Gladius 
and a pilot of say an arrow they would have the same limitations none of them can use missile operator mode at the same time on the other hand if you fight say someone in a uh i don't know like a, a constellation and there are two players a python and co-pilot well you're finding one versus two so doesn't it make sense that you probably would be in a disadvantage anyway it's two versus one so yeah of course they have an advantage towards you so and they're not even disadvantaged yeah. they're just gaining a bit more of an advantage than they had before because yeah it, it if it was one v2 if it was one arrow versus two arrows there would be a significant advantage in the fact that one arrow can fire missiles the other one can shoot as well as exactly. the other two are two different moving targets and are moving all over the place where this is one single target it's just moving the 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 scale a little bit in the in mm -hmm. the direction of the multi-crew pilots and the multi-crew players who haven't had anything to do to, and, for and, years and, and, and we we and we have to do that uh it's it's necessary because otherwise we're never going to get melter crew uh, exactly. so we can't have all the toys in in one single seat yeah. uh but I, I do understand the argument that a uh well, I mean, I understand, but at the same time, it's kind of silly. Like, you know, people that ask for realism. Oh, but don't you think that in the future, uh, a computer should be able to shoot? I mean, you know what, man? Here's uh, here's the counter argument. In the future, there would be no, no dark fighting. That's a romantic uh, thing that we did for, uh, because Chris loves World War II. Yeah. Uh, we would not fight. We would not, we would not have fighters. Period. We would be uh, l like, just look at warfare today. We're getting further and further, further away from the enemy. We would be just fighting with torpedoes and rail guns from hundreds of kilometers away. There would not be any fires. We just yeah. have fires and dogfight fight because it's cool. Yeah. That's the only reason. So you want realism? Okay, no fighters then because we don't need them. That's the reality. So you know, uh, it's a game. At the end of the day, you know, uh, if it doesn't really. Uh, and, and I do think that for single seer dogfighters, I think it's going to add a layer of strategy. I might be wrong, but I think uh, it's going to be interesting to see people having to, you know, make difficult decisions between, okay, do I switch to operate mode, operate mode or do I stay to, uh, into god mode? I think that's going to add a little layer of uh, skill, but I might be wrong. Yeah, I mean, this all plays into the the operator mode for missile and the fact that they separated it out from your guns plays so heavily into the fact that the capacitor thing is is becoming a thing because we all know that if shields are fully up then it's going to be difficult to kill somebody with one missile or maybe two right and then you're going to want to go all right I did a volley with my weapons, his shields are down, switch to missile mode, get the lock and go before he goes back. And then on the opposite right. side, this is the rock, paper, scissor everybody's been looking for. On the opposite side, you're going to hear the blip, blip, blip. Oh, I've been locked on. Boom. I know he's not firing, so I'm going to put my capacitor into shields and bring my shields back up to survive that missile if that's what happens. This, this is something where, like... I'm I'm looking at it from the uh, non PVP and the like. Hey, I'm riding around in a prospector scenario. I might be able to survive an encounter with an with another player now. This gives me well, the choice and the potential ability to get away from a PVP encounter in a non PVP ship. Honestly, I think it's even going to make like the choice of what type of missiles you use make more sense because as a solo dogfighter you're probably going to prioritize uh missiles that lock really fast uh yeah. they might not have great range but they have a really fast locking time which is ideal because hey you have to switch between one and the other you don't have the extra time to uh, when uh when on, on in contrast when you have a co-pilot using missile prey mode well the guy stays in that mode all the time so you have a little bit more leeway to sacrifice a little bit of locking time but get better accuracy distance speeds or whatever so i yep. think uh i think that might actually make things more interesting uh, you, they might make missiles that are specific really for dogfighters so that they can almost launch them instantly because they have crazy fast locking times uh responding to that high demand of you know being able to launch them quickly which makes sense. And then they use their agility to get shields down, bring bring the the 
the let's say use a constellation like the constellation's health down enough to where hey if i get this volley through i i win the fight but if i don't yeah i'm putting you know and and their their turret pilot is go you know it, it just on paper this seems like it 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 makes fights more dynamic and it's not wiggling around your joystick nonstop and, and just trying to shoot the pip. And all that's happening is nonstop fire, nonstop flying around in circles. There's, there's moments of, of decision-making that ha that has to happen. So to answer the question of like, will capacitor and operator modes change anything? I think it's going to change a lot. Is it going to be the huge, overarching change that star citizen pvpers need i don't know and i don't know what you I, think either like we uh, didn't really I, touch on that and the and the high speed combat issue well uh, uh, so yeah I, th I think it's going to change the uh uh like to to, to move star citizen more towards a skill uh, like it's not like we don't need skill right now. Like obviously, to be a dogfighter, you need skill. But it, we are too like the 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 win and lose conditions are too oriented to who has the biggest DPS, who, yeah. who is the biggest glass cannon, basically. Yeah. And we need to move away from that. Uh, one of the things we need, of course, is armor and the new damage model. But I think in the meantime, capacitor road and and the uh, uh, missile operator mode, they kind of tip the balance away, uh, the the, uh, the, the the trend away from just have bigger bigger guns and call it a day. Yep. So that's that's the change. But to the speed is obviously still an issue. I don't think capacitor mode is going to change that. Uh, I was thinking, I mean, my only suggestion would be, I think that pro probably when you get over SCM, Something should happen. I mean, someone's uh, talked about uh, having to spool to switch to over NCM, I think, which is not a bad idea. It's kind of kind of what we have in uh, uh, Elite Dangerous, where mm -hmm. you can you have two different speeds, but you have to switch from one to the other. I think the easy solution would be simply that uh, if you go over SCM, your targeting computer cannot keep up, and you lose you lose the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the lock. On a on a target, so that would make sure that you would use speed only to either catch up to a target and then slow down, or to run away. Uh, but you cannot like just go over SCM speed and just you know turn around and launch your missiles. You can't because once you get past a certain speed, uh, targeting computer cannot keep up and you cannot have a lock on the actual target. So that would actually force people to stay maybe not exactly at SCM, but like you can, if you go I think it over should scale 20, yeah yeah the faster yeah, the speed the slower the lock and it should be it should get ex exponentially more difficult so like if you're just above SP SCM, it locks slower if you keep going up like halfway it takes a, a long time and then if you're all the way oh. up don't even bother you know uh, okay so uh, uh, i misspoke uh, i didn't mean lock i mean targeting so straight up Getting, uh, choose, uh, like, even you know, uh, uh, having the pipe and uh, the target, just your targeting system would not be able to keep up, and you will lose the the target. So you would not even be able to shoot with your guns at that speed. It's just too fast. Which, to be let, let's be honest, it's kind of already what's happening now because because of the server problems. When you go past a certain speed like the game cannot keep up with that speed anyways so why not make it like <laughs> officially in game that well it, since the, since the servers cannot keep up with this with those really high speeds and you know you don't have like a proper firing solution because of that just make it so that well above a certain scm speed you can't target something because the computer cannot keep up with it that way you can still go on high speeds if you want but forget about shooting something. It's not going to happen. Yeah. I, I don't agree with the you can't target. I don't know why that just doesn't sound like it makes a whole lot of sense. But I agree with the general point of view of if you're going that fast, th we should never be even thinking about being in combat. Yeah. It just shouldn't happen. It shouldn't be possible. Maybe you can't fire the weapons. Like, we could come up with whatever reasoning behind it. 
targeting seems yeah, weird because I mean, you want to be able to target see their name yeah yeah and all that so stuff. But, yeah, yeah. So see the name, but not see the little pipes where the, it estimates where you should be shooting to touch the target. Yeah, like I the mean, pip just goes off. Like yeah, I can't handle yeah. this. Oh, yeah. it, it, exactly, yeah. because in, in in any case, at those speeds, the server cannot handle it. Like no. it's clear that uh, if people are exploiting this because they know that if I go at a certain speed, like the pipe is just not going to be able to track me because I'm going too fast. So yeah. just deactivate the thing. It's pointless. <laughs> but, but then yeah, that. I don't that know. But the thing is, is that doesn't change anything to what we have now, because then people are just going to fly at that speed if they don't want to get hit. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, that's why they there has to. So that's one side of the coin. It's the offensive. The other side of the coin is the defensive. So maybe you would have. Uh, I think the the best solution to that is essentially if you go over a CM. Your signature, which makes sense, your signature would be so high that you're going to be extremely easy to hit with missiles. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a way like, yeah, you can go super fast, but you're going to be like, uh, uh, you know, uh, really high signature and really easy to hit with missiles. So I, I don't know. It's not an easy thing to answer, but that's definitely something they need to fix. The, this, the changes they made, like you said, they have to go back to the drawing board. It basically didn't change anything in mm -hmm. my opinion yeah uh and, and people are going to complain like it's it's inevitable like if they want to make this work they're going to have to make some drastic changes that people are going to complain about but i don't know they have to so forgive me the language but they have to grow a pair and just say hey if we're going to have to do something uh like missile operator mode like people some people are not happy about that well yeah but if we don't do that then we never we're not we're never moving forward so yeah i don't know at, at some point they have to make some decisions and just Go with it. Try, experiment. That's what Half Life is for. And if it doesn't work, just scale back. That's fine. Sure. Well, all right, Tonka. So I think we'll leave it at that. I think that was a, a right. really nice call and enjoyable. We're going to bring in Golden Triangles again. He switched microphones, so hopefully that one's a bit better. All right, Tonka. Be good, buddy. Yeah, have a good one. Bye See now. Ya. All right, let's give Golden Triangles a try. Golden, can you hear me? I can. How's my mic sound? Oh, it's really bad. <laughs> okay that's fair enough you can drop me off and end the call <laughs> all right buddy I, I don't know let's ask chat chat do we keep him or do we let him go is it that bad it's already been over an hour so if you want to end the show early fully no, understand no, it's okay you were here you, you seem almost everybody has said keep him so far it's not that bad it's bad but we can manage it okay i've definitely heard worse Everybody is saying keep it. So we'll keep it we'll keep it short and sweet though. How does that sound? That sounds good. So first things off, I have a question for you. What right. does SEM speed mean to you? Uh what SEM speed means to me is exactly what the last caller said was that the 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 speeds significantly above that make the game completely unplayable and also create like these weird problems from like a networking standpoint and that's sort of why i need it i don't want to fight at slower speeds so we're just standing on the screen and shooting at each other i think it also makes the game look cooler and be uh, be better from a, a visual standpoint is i could see the ship that i'm fighting i can aim at the the I don't know, the, the wing that I want to shoot off a little bit easier, things like that. That's what it means to me. Basically, uh, have you fought in atmosphere versus space? The way yeah. fighting in atmosphere feels just feels better. 100% agree. Okay. So in my mind, I was kind of under the impression that SEM meant you are going this speed and if you let go, then you're going to return to dead stop within X time period. That's what it meant to me. But obviously I was incorrect in that assumption. Okay. So I yeah. guess getting back... Oh, go ahead. Well, yeah, I think it, it just means that... I think they're just trying to set a bar where it's like, this is where we want you guys to be. And then we were like, yeah, but there's like all this space above that bar and that's faster and faster is better, right? And we just got like, 
you know, the, the scale of the world is so big, they had to make it so we can go a thousand meters a second. But there's no reason that we should ever be in combat in those scenarios. Right. But then, so I think if you just go, yo, you can't shoot your guns when you're going a thousand meters a second, then anybody who wants to disengage from a fight would just go a thousand meters a second, and it's an automatic win. So it's like this weird balancing that they have to figure out. So it's, it's not, I'm not envious. It's, this is a really crappy situation they, they've put themselves in. Right. So I was thinking more along the lines of introducing this capacitor gameplay. It sounds really good on paper, but I think they're going to have to work through a whole lot of different issues. So like if you're above SCM speed, then it takes exponential more power on a logarithmic curve to change direction. Might be a solution. So you just fly in a straight line and then you're actually defenseless? Right. I thought that's what it was supposed to be. Like, remember when cruise, when they explained what cruise mode would be? Was yeah. you, you just cruised forever. And, but if you tried to turn, it was like, yeah, you're blacking out. You're just going to black out. Yep. That's kind of what I thought. Was yeah. The and whole it's not thing. really the case anymore. Right. So with the uh, with the capacitors coming in, I'm a little confused as to how this is going to work because you have energy weapons, and yeah, that makes sense for energy weapons, but ballistics, they just sip power when it comes to electricity-wise, so I don't understand how this is logically going to affect ballistics. Well, uh, did, you, did you hear any of the calls that we had earlier when we went over? I can bring it up on screen again, too is the Revenant Gatling gun. I just had a Revenant Gatling gun in game and it had 5,000 ammo. This this thing on screen is showing about half full at 77. So this probably has 150. Okay. So that's a significant change in how many rounds you can fire. So first off, you better be on target if you're gonna fire that gun. Second, uh, there's a possibility that reload could exist. Like this is a magazine. And okay. now you have to wait for the magazine to reload. And that's similar to the wait for your capacitor to recharge. And then that's the balance between the two weapons. And then it's still the choice of, I want to use ballistics because um, this person I know is using shields that are not good against them, or they're, I, I'll be able to go through their, their ammo with or their armor with this specific weapon. Like the choices of pre-fight are still there. And then the choice of what weapons you fire during the fight are more, are be or I think are better and are more there. Like I always envision Star Citizen being using your lasers to take down shields and then switching ballistics to just burn through their armor. And I was thinking that exactly kind of the could same be a thing. thing now. Yeah, that's kind of like exactly what I was thinking. When it comes to reloading in space, if that's the direction they want to go down. I'd be willing to test it out, but I always thought it was like, if you want to reload, then you better have like a SCU box of shells and you have to get out an EVA and reload it. That's what I thought. But if they're having like auto reloaders, that might be kind of interesting. Yeah. I mean, you could still have your 5,000 rounds, but the, what they want to do is that like, okay, I want to fire now and I can only fire in a short burst. And a Revenant Gatling gun is literally like, you know, the is like an A-10 Warthog weapon. Like, you're going to go through 150 rounds pretty quickly, so you better choose when to fire them smartly, and if you don't, you got to wait until they reload. Right. And that kind of goes... I know that they were thinking about having beam weapons, like a mining laser is a beam weapon, technically, but for combat, because we still don't have, like, a minigun equivalent of a laser weapon, which a beam could do. They don't like beam weapons because they're hitscan, apparently, but then they put in those hit scan beam weapons, so I don't know. Yeah. And then they literally nerfed them because they were so broken. Hit scan weapons are dangerous. Very much. Especially if they slow things down. Uh, what'd you think about operator modes? So operator modes and going off of what some of the other callers said, I think it's good as long as they're not taking functionality away from the pilot, which it, it like kind of seems, yeah, it kind of seems like that they're not doing that, yeah. which is fine. But 
like uh, the idea that another caller had about being able to remote in and manually control a turret or a, sorry a missile I think that that's a fantastic idea they just have to figure out some way to keep the delicate dance of missiles and countermeasures yeah countermeasures yeah nobody's really talked about those yet today so they're supposed to be important but i haven't really noticed a big change being able to you hold down the button and it cues up the countermeasures and then it fires them one after another i don't really see a difference between doing that and just firing off a single one so i'm not sure what they're planning on doing with countermeasures but it is something that needs to be discussed missiles should be a weapon where, okay, I'm going to use this, and I know that it's going to be 10,000 credits to fire this thing, and then I have to go back and rearm rather than just click a button on the repair and it says rearm, and then the ma missile magically attaches to your ship. Yeah, that's true. I also think, like, the choice of when you use the missile is a situation where, like, I've disabled their ships enough to know that I will likely hit. So I've done enough damage, maybe they won't be able to fire countermeasures, or they won't be as effective, or they won't be flying as fast, so even if the countermeasures go off, it'll retarget and hit them, things like that. Yeah. One of the things that I'm really hoping for Theaters of War is to actually have a playground to test combat with less consequence of, oh, I want to try this out, get destroyed, wait a half an hour for my ship to rebuild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... We'll have to see what happens with that. And when it comes to quantum travel, people were talking about the capacitors, but I don't think that quantum travel is being affected by capacitors. It's just weapons, shields, and thrusters, correct? Yes. Okay. So, who knows? If they yeah, add other and... ones, which would be ridiculous, so... And I know that they've talked about adding dumb fire missiles that don't have any computers. So if you want to pop off a missile real quick, I they believe have them that. Yeah. In the uh, Mustang Delta. Correct. That's. Yeah. I mean, they just need to make them bigger sizes, and then you could use your missiles at a click of a button. Sure. And then that removes the missile operator mode, or makes it more effective, or the, it removes the lock, I guess. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, man. I'm glad we had you. The mic wasn't that bad. It is. It is. It's got a bit of of uh, background noise, but it's not so bad. So thank you for coming in, Golden. I appreciate it. I'm glad we got you in here. Take care. Take care, buddy. All right, guys. So that'll do it with this week's uh, answer the call. So our goal is still 51. So nobody signed up. So, YouTube viewers, I'm relying on you to hit this goal of 100. All right, guys? There are thousands of you that watch these videos every week. I'm going to put this up on, on a Week in Review as well. All right? If you're in chat, exclamation point star in chat if you're still watching. Star Trek Fleet Command, this is the next generation... Uh, update for it and you guys can check it out it's five minutes of your time all you got to do is play through the tutorial and you help support my channel on twitch my channel on youtube me in general uh big time big time so i don't really ever ask for anybody to support in uh you know financially in any ways i just put up those things up for you guys so again it's a pretty basic like if you're watching on youtube there's the join button if you're watching on twitch there's the subscribe button. I never really mentioned them. I might start mentioning them on YouTube a little bit more. I don't know. Um, but this kind of stuff, I always try to push really hard because it's just five minutes of your time and it takes no effort. So on Twitch, uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. It's, it, it is easy to get to. All you got to do is use this QR code. That's what the command in, in Twitch chat would do is bring up this QR code that's on the screen. You just take out your phone, scan the QR code, and that should bring it up. And uh, then you just download the game, play it for five minutes, and you're all good. All right? So again, if you guys wa are watching on YouTube, uh, feel free to give this a try. Also, 
if you're watching on YouTube and uh, want to join the show live. I do stream live on twitch.tv slash salty mic on Sundays at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So you can stop by and join the show like the great callers that we had today. As always, thank you to the moderators. Uh, I think it was Zeus and Oxia today who put the callers in the list. And if you're watching on Twitch and you didn't get to catch the entire show, it'll be up on YouTube later today. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. And we'll see you guys later. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye now.